What if Ahsoka joined Maul on Mandalore when he said that they could stop Sidious together? Happy Ahsoka month, everybody. We're almost to the show. I'm super excited for it. Hope you are too. I hope it does well. Of course. And yeah, today we're going to bring you an Ahsoka fan fiction. What if she joined Maul on Mandalore? Would they save Anakin? Would Sidious be stopped? Let's get into that and more right now. Ahsoka stood in front of Maul in the Great Hall on Mandalore. Maul had his hand outstretched as an invitation to join him. Ahsoka had listened as Maul said the Republic and the Jedi were doomed, and it was getting hard for her to disagree. She had seen the ways that the Republic was deteriorating, and if anyone knew the secrets of it all, perhaps it was Maul. After some hesitation, Ahsoka had agreed to join him, so long as he answers one question. What does Maul want with Anakin Skywalker? And Maul, in the most serious but sad tone, says that Anakin is the key to everything, that he has long been groomed for his role as Sidious' new apprentice, and that his original plan was to lure him here, with Kenobi, to kill him and deprive Sidious of his prized pupil. Ahsoka said that she knows Anakin, and she ignited her two lightsabers. She would fight Maul, and Maul couldn't believe it. He was so close. He growled, and he knew that he had to use his final card in this matter. He didn't want to reveal the identity of Sidious yet. He didn't know if he could trust Ahsoka, but now he had no choice if she was going to be this stubborn. Angrily, Maul slammed his leg into the ground and yelled at Ahsoka, saying she is still so blind, begging her to think about it, asking her who has groomed Anakin, who has been his mentor, who has controlled the war, who is in the middle of everything. A look of surprise crossed Ahsoka's face as it began to click. Palpatine was all she could say. Maul put his lightsaber on the ground to show that he meant this, that he had no intention of fighting, and that only together could they truly defeat Sidious. There was still time before his final move began. Ahsoka put away her lightsabers and agreed. She couldn't believe it, yet it made so much sense. No wonder the Jedi had become blind to the dark side. The Sith Lord was sitting above them all for years, and no one had any idea. Without the two of them fighting and then waiting overnight to bring Maul back to Coruscant, they were much further ahead in the timeline. The two of them would run down to Maul's personal ship and take off. Ahsoka had Rex and Bo-Katan in full control of this battle, while Maul left his forces to fall. He no longer cared about ruling Mandalore, he was going to get revenge on his master. As the two of them entered hyperspace, their main mission was the same, stop Sidious from taking over, but their intended methods of doing so could not have been further apart. On Coruscant, Anakin was heading over to the Chancellor's office to inform him that Obi-Wan had engaged General Grievous. On his ride over, he reflected on the war that looked to be coming to an end. He thought about falling in love with Padme, then the Battle of Geonosis, he thought about Obi-Wan, and how they'd done more together than any other Jedi during this battle, during this war. And he thought about Ahsoka, their first time meeting on Christophsis, her leaving the Jedi Order, and now, her somewhere on Mandalore with Rex, taking on Maul. He ought to check in on her once this was all over, he thought. And from there, everything would change. Anakin went to the Chancellor, and he revealed to Anakin that he was the Sith Lord. The Jedi were plotting to kill him, and only through the dark side could Padme be saved from certain death. Anakin wanted to kill him, but instead he went and told Mace Windu, and from there, Mace took the three Jedi Masters and would engage Darth Sidious. Ahsoka and Maul exited together from hyperspace after a long trip from Mandalore. They didn't speak much, but they knew they would have to work together to take down Sidious. He would be alone, and the Jedi Ahsoka and the Sith Maul could take him out. They descended toward the Republic Executive Building, where Palpatine's office was. The sky was dark, and all was quiet except for the buzzing of speeders through the air. As Ahsoka and Maul descended, they looked at the window to the Chancellor's office. The closer they got, the more they realized what they were seeing. Flashing lights, purple, red, green and blue, those gone in an instant, and Ahsoka felt into the force for Anakin wondering if he was there, and she felt her former master because of how conflicted he was. He was like a dark cloud in the force, 
and Ahsoka looked down to the landing platform of the building to see a speeder land and a figure hurriedly run inside. She wasn't nearly close enough to see who it was, but somehow she knew it was Anakin. And as they got closer to the building, the window shattered at Palpatine's office. Then lightning began to spray from the window. A battle had already begun without them, and in a split-second decision, Maul realized he didn't need Ahsoka. He had to get down to that battle as quickly as possible, and he couldn't have this Jedi holding him back from doing what was necessary. A partnership between them was always just a way for him to escape Mandalore as quickly as possible. If he didn't offer Ahsoka his hand, they would have fought, and they would not have been in time for this. He could go for a stab on Ahsoka now, but understood she was probably ready for that. He would do it the hard way. And right then, Maul used the force to push Ahsoka into the wall of the ship. He then used his extreme physical strength to push the forward throttle, breaking it at full speed towards the ground. With Ahsoka recovering from the push, Maul cut a hole in the ceiling and jumped out. Ahsoka took a moment too long to recover, and was just barely too late to ignite her lightsabers to stop Maul before he was in the Coruscant air. This maneuver was intended to kill her, but Maul greatly underestimated Ahsoka. She was Padawan to us Anakin Skywalker after all. If anyone would know how to get out of a crashing ship while making it look graceful, it was her. It was too late to stop the ship from crashing into the ground, she just had to hope the civilians were all cleared out, and as it sped to the ground, she turned the ship to face the main window to the executive building. Moments before the ship slammed into the ground, she leapt through the window, lightsabers ignited, and landed aboard a parked speeder nearby. Hot wearing and taking off, she sped towards Maul as he, too, hijacked the speeder. She was much better at navigating the Coruscant traffic than him, and she watched as Maul exited his speeder and began leaping from speeder to speeder to speeder. He was so close, just a couple more jumps, a couple more moves, and he would be at the window. Maul could feel it, he could feel his revenge, his time was coming. Then, Maul felt something in the force. He was barely able to jump in time to avoid the lightsabers of Ahsoka. Snarling that she survived, he ignited his own lightsaber, and they battled aboard the speeder, in the middle of the traffic. Ahsoka listened and she heard the lightning stop from the office. She sensed Anakin, and after a few more lightning clashes with Maul, she pulled a desperate move. Backflipping off the speeder towards the office window, she waited until she was facing the speeder again, then used a force push to disable the engine and send the speeder flying to the ground, while the momentum from the push sent her backwards at exactly the right speed. Ahsoka heard Maul screaming in anger as she spun around in the air, heading directly for the broken window. As she approached the window, Mace Windu raising his lightsaber to the fallen Chancellor, she heard Anakin yell, I need him, and Ahsoka had to make a choice. The momentum from the push landed her perfectly on the open window ledge. She landed right as Mace swung down, and Anakin had ignited his lightsaber to cut Mace down. But Ahsoka pushed Anakin backwards as he slid all the way on his feet to the open doorway. Anakin Skywalker came to a halt, and the next thing he heard was a lightsaber slash similar to the one he heard when he killed Count Dooku. In the last minute, so much had happened. Windu defeated Palpatine, Anakin entered the room. He watched Windu try to kill an innocent man, and he was about to stop him, to save Palpatine, to save the only person that could save Padme. And Ahsoka had somehow stopped him. Ahsoka was somehow here. She'd let Windu kill Palpatine. Ahsoka just let Padme die. Now Anakin looked up, anger burning in his eyes as he looked upon the scene. Palpatine had promised to save Padme more than anything the Jedi had done, and Anakin had just let him die. He could have stopped this. He should have stopped this. He could have saved Padme. Looking to Ahsoka, he yelled, What have you done? with venom after every word. Ahsoka didn't get scared very often. She'd faced Grievous, Ventress, entire droid armies. She'd been captured and alone on a planet of hunters. She'd been expelled from the Jedi Order, alone in the underworld of Coruscant. She'd been through everything. Yet nothing was nearly as scary as this moment. Her master, her best friend, her brother, staring at her with hatred in his eyes. 
It was her worst nightmare, and Anakin began walking towards her. Ahsoka didn't understand. Mace told Anakin to stand down and pointed his lightsaber at him. Anakin didn't stop, and Mace got in between them now. Anakin would destroy them both for killing the man that would have saved his wife. But in the distance, Anakin looked and saw Maul flying towards the window aboard a burning speeder. He leapt into the air and screamed, He took everything from me. I was supposed to kill him. Mace turned to see Maul, and Anakin took this split-second opportunity, slashing Mace across the eyes, blinding him. Mace stumbled away in agony, grabbing at his eyes as Maul entered the room. Anakin looked to Maul and said that if he wanted revenge, kill Windu. Maul nodded and headed for the blind Jedi. Then Anakin charged at Ahsoka. Ahsoka put her lightsabers up and began blocking strikes from Anakin. The tears in her eyes were blurring her vision, so she spun away, begging Anakin to stop this. But he wasn't hearing her at all. How much could Palpatine have meant to him, Ahsoka wondered, as she blocked a new flurry of strikes. Ahsoka took her first swing back, trying to disarm her former master, and she felt a stinging pain as a kick hit her square in the chest. It sent her flying backwards, and she rolled out of the window, barely holding on to her lightsabers. Luckily, the building was rounded to the ground, so she began sliding now to the ground. Looking up, she saw Anakin sliding not far behind her against the building. In the office now, Maul crept around Windu. Sidious was finally dead, but he was supposed to have done it. He was supposed to have gotten revenge for his brother. He planned everything for so long, only for the Jedi to get in the way. Yes, he was dead, but what did it matter if he wasn't the one to have done it? Maul ignited his lightsaber and swung at Windu, but he was surprised when it was blocked. Windu wasn't even looking at him, but he now stood up completely straight. Maul slowly, quietly circled again and went for another strike, blocked. Frustrated, Maul went in again, striking at Windu's head, then his legs, then going for a stab. It was blocked every time. Maul backed away, becoming afraid, and then Windu turned to him and attacked. Maul was taken aback by his strength in Vapod after being blinded, but it didn't seem to affect the Jedi Master at all. Maul was backed up to a corner, desperately blocking every strike, but before he knew it, the powerful Windu cut through his knee. As Maul fell, he looked up to see the purple lightsaber go straight through his neck, and he was gone. Windu reached down to grab a ripped sleeve from Maul and wrapped it around his eyes. He may have been blind in sight, but the force flowed through him more than ever. This renegade Sith Maul was no match for him, and from there, he alerted Republic security that the Chancellor was killed by Sith Renegade Maul. He was dead, but he informed security that Maul had help. Help from Anakin Skywalker, now an enemy of the Republic, to be arrested on sight or killed if deemed necessary. Windu had to do damage control. Yes, Palpatine was not directly killed by Anakin, but Anakin was the enemy in this situation. Once it was all settled, once Anakin was captured or, unfortunately, killed, things would be settled from there. He would tell the truth from there. But for now, the Republic needed to capture Anakin. And on the streets of Coruscant, Anakin walked with power through a crowd of people. Ahsoka had gotten away, but not for long. Anakin knew she was close. His mind was being consumed by a fire that may never be able to put out. All he wanted now was revenge for Padme. Anakin turned a corner and saw Ahsoka about to finish climbing a ladder. Using the force, he ripped the ladder down and Ahsoka tumbled into the street. Landing in a battle position, she ignited her lightsabers. Fine, she thought, we'll do it like this. And in the dimly lit streets of Coruscant, the air became thick with tension as the former master and Padawan faced off against each other. Anakin, now seemingly consumed by the dark side, radiated an aura of fear that sent shivers down Ahsoka's spine. However, she knew she had to survive, and she must accept that this wasn't Anakin, at least not the Anakin she knew, and her heart ached to see him fall like this. She knew Anakin was in there somewhere, but he was hidden, buried deeply away. The glow of the blue lightsabers cut through the darkness as the two skilled combatants locked eyes. 
Their movements were fluid and precise as they struck, a testament to the countless hours they had spent training together, and Anakin was undeniably the better fighter, his rage fueling his strikes with frightening power, and his acceptance of the dark side had granted him even more newfound strength, even though the darkness was consuming him, turning him into a new person. He utilized it to put relentless pressure on Ahsoka. Despite his ruthless assaults, Ahsoka managed to handle her own, drawing upon her knowledge of Anakin's techniques to counter his effect attacks effectively. The clashing of lightsabers echoed through the streets, and bystanders widely retreated to safety, knowing they were witnessing a battle between two very strong opponents. Anakin's anger and darkness gave him an edge, but Ahsoka's calm and level-headedness allowed her to remain focused and composed. She jumped up top stairs, sides of buildings, anything she could using her insane acrobatics to get any edge she could on Anakin. And suddenly alarms began to sound, and the two of them took a second to look up to a large screen, now displaying an image of Anakin. Security forces swarmed the air, looking all over for the fugitive, Anakin Skywalker. With a sudden surge of fury, Anakin unleashed a torrent of force lightning, aiming to overwhelm Ahsoka with the raw power of the dark side. He'd never done this before, it just came to him in this moment, and she deflected the energy bolts with her lightsaber, but the strain was evident on her face as she pushed back against the relentless onslaught. Ahsoka stared at him and managed to ask why this was happening. Anakin advanced forward, yelling that Palpatine was the only one that could have saved Padme from dying, and she killed him. Ahsoka didn't fully understand, but he knew Anakin's connection with Padme was strong. So all of this was coming from a place of love, Ahsoka wondered. She managed to break off the lightning and flip towards him. The duel raged on, the intensity escalating with every exchange. Ahsoka could feel her strength waning, but she refused to back down. She believed there was still good left in Anakin, that she could reach him somehow. But the dark side had clouded him, and he relentlessly pursued his advantage. In a critical moment, Ahsoka finally saw an opening and attempted a disarming move, aiming to knock Anakin's lightsaber from his hand. However, Anakin was too quick to fall for a tactic she'd used on him in training. He sidestepped her maneuver and retaliated with a devastating slash that grazed Ahsoka across the arm, causing her to stumble back in pain, one lightsaber falling to the ground. As she clutched her arm, Anakin seized the opportunity to strike a final blow. His blue blade descended upon her, and Ahsoka barely managed to block the strike. However, the force behind Anakin's attack was overwhelming, and her defenses crumbled. Anakin continued swinging down on her as she held her lightsaber up with one hand. Then, Anakin found his mark, cutting off her hand, and the other lightsaber tumbled away. Now disarmed, in agonizing pain, and exhausted, Ahsoka gazed up at Anakin, hoping to see a glimpse of the man that she once knew. But all she saw was the cold and relentless Sith standing before her. With a heavy heart, she accepted her defeat. Anakin raised his saber and looked down at Ahsoka. Then he heard an echo of Palpatine somewhere in his head, a remnant or something, saying he had done well, that his hate made him powerful, and now he must strike down Ahsoka and take his place as the Sith in the dark side of the Force. He was dead, but Anakin could still hear him. But Anakin looked down at Ahsoka again, and this time, he saw her as the hopeful, excited Padawan that would often look at Anakin with wonder in her eyes, wonder, bewilderment, astonishment at how good Anakin was, how powerful, how right he was. The wonder, the first time they met on Christophsis. It was like, after seeing Ahsoka defeated by him, a trance was being broken. Anakin looked to his hand, the hand that had been cut off by the Sith Lord Dooku, and now he just did the same thing to his own Padawan. All for revenge, he thought. As soon as he defeated her, every feeling of revenge turned into guilt. He was about to kill her. Anakin instead extinguished his lightsaber and threw it to the side. He was trembling, trembling with fear of himself and Ahsoka crawled away with fear and sadness in her, in her eyes. A swarm of Republic security came and arrested Anakin without any resistance. A week later, Anakin sat alone in the Jedi Temple Detention Center. The Jedi Council had negotiated his lifetime prison sentence to be transferred to the temple. In the last week, 
Anakin had been arrested and gone to trial. During the trial, he did anything he could to make up for his arrogant mistakes. He revealed to those in session, including the Jedi Council, Ahsoka, and Padme, that Palpatine revealed to him that he was a Sith Lord. From this, it could be determined that he was working with Dooku and the Separatists. New evidence was found in his office to back this up. Anakin then revealed he had swung at Jedi Master Mace Windu, who was attempting to take down the Sith Lord. Anakin revealed he did this because Palpatine had promised him that only he could save Padme, his wife. Their relationship had become public now, with it being wide open for all to see. And then, when former Jedi Ahsoka Tano pushed him away, Anakin revealed he had blinded Windu and tried to kill Ahsoka before coming to his senses. Anakin looked around and saw Windu, with something over his eyes to cover the blinded eyes. Anakin was charged with conspiring with the Separatists and attempted murder of Republic Commander and Jedi Council member Mace Windu. The Republic then elected Senator Mon Mothma as Chancellor. The Republic was taking down Separatist remnants, and they had won the war, while Anakin had lost everything. Anakin knew it was his fault, that he was in the wrong, and he knew that for sure when Padme came to visit with two children. They had twins, and she'd survived childbirth without any issue. Everything Palpatine told him was a lie. One year later, Obi-Wan Kenobi went down to the detention center to visit his old friend. Anakin was often visited by him, Padme, Ahsoka, among others, and it seemed to keep him from going insane in the cell. His relationship with Obi-Wan was different, both of them thinking that they failed each other, but they were still friends, and his relationship with Ahsoka, Obi-Wan had noted, had been almost completely repaired. It was like Ahsoka completely forgave him for his actions and Obi-Wan took the final step downstairs, turning to Anakin's cell. But he had to begin running closer to the cell as he saw two temple guards stunned on the ground. They were moving, they were alive, but they'd been stunned by a blaster or something, and Anakin was nowhere to be found. Obi-Wan was about to sound the alarm when he heard beeping and shushing coming from the vents. Instead, Obi-Wan went to the security cameras. The one at the cell was disabled, but the one at the opposite side of the vent, hidden away in the corner of the outside of the temple, Obi-Wan saw Rex, Ahsoka, and R2-D2 climb out, soon followed by Anakin Skywalker. He knew the right thing to do was alert the Council and alert the Jedi, but instead he smiled, happier than he'd been in a year, and deleted the recording, knowing Anakin could now run away and live out his life. No more Jedi, Sith, Force, politics, just him and what makes him happy. Ten years later, Anakin and Padme sat together at Niamos Beach. They smiled as they watched Luke and Leia playing together in the water. They were hidden away from the galaxy, and they would often miss people like Ahsoka, Rex, Obi-Wan, but they knew it was necessary, and those people agreed to stay away as well, keeping the galaxy cut off from them and letting them stay hidden, and they couldn't be happier. And that's where our story ends today. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. I really liked writing it, really liked the path it went down. It was hard for me to maintain a real partnership between Ahsoka and Maul, so I wanted to take a different path. I don't know if anyone's done this, but hey, I thought it was fun. Let me know what you thought. Sure, there's some plot holes. I don't care. It was a lot of fun to write, so I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, thanks for watching. Happy Ahsoka month. Super excited for this show. And I'll see you in the next video.